Hello and welcome to the course Physics 141 Classical Electromagnetism 1. This is actually the first part of the Classical Electromagnetism series. In this course, we will be discussing about the basics of uh, electrostatics and magnetostatics. We will start with the basic uh, electromagnetism laws that you have discussed in your physics 41 university physics 3 so our first chapter will actually be all about electrostatics and the first part of that is the electric field so in your physics 41 uh, subject you have learned that there are two ways to calculate uh, the electric field given a charge distribution so there is Coulomb's law and there's also Gauss's law our first lesson will be all about Coulomb's law and since Coulomb's law is applicable to both discrete charge distribution and continuous charge distribution we will uh, split the lesson into two so for lesson 1.1 we will be discussing about discrete charge distribution for lesson 1.2 uh, the continuous charge distribution so from your physics 41 you learn that <clears throat> you can calculate electric force and electric field using Coulomb's law for if you have a point charge and you want to find the magnitude or the electric field at a certain point, a distance uh, r from your point charge q, then you can use this equation, the, equa the Coulomb's law for a point charge. So if you have a point charge q and you want to find the electric field at a certain point p, uh, before that we actually call the location of your point charge as the source point and the location wherein you want to find the electric field as the field point. Uh, in your uh, physics 41 subject, you always assume that your source point or your source of electric field is at the origin, such that if you measure the separation distance and the separation distance uh, unit vector, you just get this uh, distance automatically. But in general, your source point charge also has a position. Say we will designate the position of our source point as uh, R prime. Similarly, the field point R is given by uh, this position vector. Take note, our electric field here depends on the position vector, the location of your field point. And to get the separation distance, which we will term as the curly R, it's just R minus R prime. So you can verify that by adding these vectors graphically, uh, you can verify the equation for our curly R vector, the separation distance vector. So in order to get, take note that the direction of the electric field is always along the direction of the separation distance vector along the direction connecting the points uh, Q your source point and the field point so the electric field is along this direction the curly R hat direction so to get the unit vector of the separation distance vector just divide it by its uh, magnitude so if you have multiple uh, source of electric field then we just follow the principle of superposition so if you have a discrete charge distribution then you just sum all of the electric field uh, contribution for each of the source points but if you have a continuous charge distribution then you integrate all of the differential electric field contributions of each of the differential charges so we'll discuss this uh, form in the next lesson so let's go to discrete charge distribution first 
So if you have point charges and you are asked to find the electric field at certain point P, and you have point charge 1, point charge 2, until point charge uh, N, and each of these uh, point charges have different separation distance vectors towards our uh, field point P, then the total electric field is just the sum of all the individual electric fields. So E1, E2, up to E sub N. So if you use the Coulomb's law for a point charge in a form for each of the point charges, so this is the electric field E1 due to Q1, this is the electric field due to Q2, and so on until this is the electric field due to Q sub N, the nth uh, point charge. So collecting the uh, common terms, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and we get this formula for a discrete charge uh, distribution. So you sum over Q sub i over R sub i squared R i hat. So take note here that R, R i hat again are the direction or are the unit separation distance vectors. So you divide R, min, uh, R minus R i prime separation distance vector over its magnitude and again in this case we only have one field point but we have multiple source points ri prime so let's have an example so suppose you are asked to find the total electric field at point p due to these two uh, charge distribution q1 a positive charge q and Q2, another positive charge, uh, Q. So Q1 is on the negative x-axis, a distance d over 2 from the origin. Similar with Q2, it's also a distance d over 2, but it's in the positive x-axis. And point P is along the z-axis, so it's, it has a distance z above the z-axis. <clears throat> so how do we find the total electric field at point P? So since this is discrete charge distribution, we just sum over all the contributions of each charge. So we have the electric field due to Q1 plus the electric field due to Q2. So in order to evaluate this expression, we need to know what is R1 and R1 hot, and then R2 and R2 hot. So this is our separation distance vector R1 from Q1 to point P. This is our separation distance vector R2 from Q2 to point P. And how do we get the component forms of these uh, two? So in your physics 41, you usually uh, first find the uh, components. Take note that the electric field due to Q1 is along this direction, so quadrant 1. And for point 2, the electric field due to Q2 is directed along quadrant number two so along this line along that direction so usually what you do in uh, elementary classic uh, elementary electromagnetism is you get e1 get its components and e2 get its components and you can get it get its components by first using uh, by solving the magnitude using Coulomb's law kq over r squared and then you find you measure this angle say theta 1 and you also measure this angle theta 2 and then you use sine and cosine laws to solve for the x and y or sorry in this case x and z components that's how you usually do it in elementary uh, electromagnetism but here we'll have a more generalized solution so we will first find the positions of our position vectors of our source points so this is r1 prime the position vector of q1 this is r2 prime the position vector of q2 and this is the field point vector r the position of our field point now from this we can see that r1 prime is just in terms of vectors negative d over 2 x hat so it's in the negative x axis negative x hat direction and its length is d over 2 we can also see that r2 prime is just d over 2 x hat so d over 2 uh, magnitude the direction is uh, positive x hat 
and this vector r here our field point position vector is just z and its direction is z hat z z hat so we can now formulate the separation distance vector r1 so the separation vector curly r1 will just be uh, r which is z z hat minus r1 prime negative d over 2 x hat and that will give you z z hat plus d over 2 x hat similarly you can also show the form the vector form of the separation vector r2 to get r minus r2 prime so z z hat minus d over 2 x hat <clears throat> so solving the magnitude of r1 using pythagorean theorem so this is just d over 2 this is z so therefore the magnitude or the hypotenuse is just z squared plus d over 2 squared or d squared over 4. And it has the same magnitude as our r2 here. So we can now write the separation distance unit vectors r1 and r2. So r1 is just the r1 separation distance vector divided by its magnitude. Similarly for r2, it's the R2 separation distance vector divided by the magnitude. So we only need these four values here in order to evaluate this expression. So you, you substitute your values of R1 and R2 here and R1 hat and R2 hat here. So there's no integration involved here. It's just purely simple algebra and doing so I will leave the algebra to you doing so will give you this uh, value take note that the final electric field is only along the Z axis the X components of the unit vectors will actually cancel each other out so you will notice that our uh, the electric field due to Q1 here will be along quadrant 1 and the electric field due to Q2 here will be along quadrant 2 and both of their X components will cancel each other out and the remaining component will only be the Z component so that's the end of our lesson for the day on Coulomb's law for discrete charge distribution our next lesson will be uh, Coulomb's law. We will continue discussing Coulomb's law but now for continuous charge uh, distributions. So that's all for this meeting. Thank you for listening and I will see you for our next lesson.